Hello and welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax Guys. guys. <laughs> I'm still recovering from the Frankenstein effect of last episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought uh, that was an you know, interesting yeah. way to... If you didn't hear that, you need to go back and take a listen to that one, too. But the yeah. Frankenstein effect basically is the uh, you create the monster, and then you try to clean up the mess that the monster makes, and you've yeah. got problems. That but the work. monster's out of control. In this case, the IRS. Indeed it is. But uh, before we get going, let's encourage people to talk with us. Uh, the Fair Tax Guys, gmail.com is our uh, email address. We're on Facebook at The Fair Tax Guys as well. So we'd certainly appreciate your in, uh, input and uh, communications and anything that you want to say to us or questions you might have. Uh, that's how you get a hold of us, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com or look us up on Facebook. Yep. And so today we're going to uh, talk about the most popular handout. When we go to events and we set up an information booth, this is by far the most popular handout. We've given out thousands of these things. It is a comparison sheet of how the fair tax compares to the current income tax and the flat tax. All right, it's got the three of them lined up right against each other. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot here. There's two pages. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get through the whole thing in one episode, um, but we're going to handle the most important parts yep. of it. You're going to hear a lot about tax reform during this election season. Of course, I think national security, immigration, and things like that are going to be front burner issues. But the way the taxes affect the economy, the economy is always a front burner issue on that. So, as you might expect, there are several candidates come out with all different kinds of plans. Yeah. And, uh, of course, i got to mention this one, too, that uh, the House Ways and Means Committee under the Paul Ryan, actually, he's uh, the former chairman. He's now the Speaker of the House. But the, the plan that came out of the House Ways and Means Committee is largely credited to Paul Ryan. They call mm-hmm. it the better way. And I like what Kerry Bowers said about it. This, uh, this better way <laughs> is going from a income and payroll tax-based system administered and enforced by the IRS to a income and payroll tax system administered and enforced by the IRS. Yeah, big sweeping change they call it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what passes for sweeping change in Washington. Yeah. But uh, there are some stark differences between the fair tax and some of these other fair tax for uh, other tax reform proposals, and that's what we want to get into on this edition of Fair Tax Power Radio. Yeah. We're gonna... First, let's talk about what kind of tax the fair tax is. Everybody since 1913, we've had an income tax. Since World War II, the 40s, we have had withholding from paychecks Mm -hmm. and that's just the system that everybody knows and and accepts as the way it is the fair tax radically radically changes that idea and and it is hard to bring about because it's the the current income tax and withholding in the irs it's all anybody has known their entire life i mean you know the the income tax has been around 103 years so (laughs) it's it's the only thing that we know, and unfortunately, we've gotten too used to it, and we need to wean ourselves off of it. Yeah, well, and no. if you don't remember anything else about the fair tax, understand that the fair tax replaces that entire system. Yeah. Income tax goes away, Gone. which means withholding from your paycheck gone away. The payroll taxes for Social Security and Medicare, they go away even though those two programs are indeed funded under the fair tax, just under a different model. That goes away. Income tax returns. April 15th is still on the calendar, but with the fair tax, it's just another lovely spring day. The entire income tax system as we know it is out the window and replaced by the fair tax, which which is is paid anonymously at the cash register when you buy things. Yep, yep. And it's so much simpler. Um, it, like Bob says, it, it, it is a sales tax, a consumption tax. It's automatically added to the price of whatever you're purchasing. And uh, it's, it's there for everybody. Uh, and yet uh, there still is a mechanism that pr- uh, protects the people who are just getting by. Those that are at, at or below the poverty level are protected by the, by the prebate. Okay, we'll get into that with the progressivity in a minute. Yeah. But the, yeah. the current system, we've got taxes, individual incomes, corporate incomes. There are payroll taxes, as we said. Self-employment tax, if you employ yourself, then you have to pay an extra tax on top of that which is largely what would have been your employer's contribution to Social Security or something like that. A state tax, gift tax, alternative minimum tax, all of these things go away with a fair tax. Yep. So, And the fair tax itself is, as we said on this, uh, this chart, single rate national sales tax on final retail consumption with no exemption. 
Business inputs are not taxed. Education tuition is not taxed. Now, business inputs are not taxed. That means business-to-business purchases are not subject to the fair tax. Because if you do that, you start rolling in those embedded costs that we've talked about before. And education costs are not taxed because we want people to get a better education, whether it's college, a trade school, whatever it is. If you're advancing your education and it gives you a chance of getting a better job or better pay, we need that to happen because generally the more people make, the more they spend. Yeah, so when you talk about flat tax, you hear these folks say, we're going to fix this, we're going to flatten it out, we're going to make it so you can do your tax return on a postcard. <laughs> folks, that is still an income tax. Yeah. It still taxes your income. It still requires withholding. It still requires the IRS to administer and enforce it, and it will not stay flat. We have seen this over and over and over again. So do not confuse the fair tax, which is a retail consumption tax paid anonymously at the cash register, and the flat tax, which is basically the same system we still have now. By the way, the flat tax is legislation in Congress. It's H.R. 1040, the Flat Tax Act, uh, and it has zero co-sponsors. All right. It was introduced in February 2015, all right, it's now August of 2016. It still has, I looked it up today before the recording session, it still has zero co-sponsors. Um, and no now, companion bill in the Senate. That's telling. <laughs> so now uh, the chart says, <laughs> for the description of what type of tax it is, hang on to your, you know, I hope you're sitting down here, allows a one-time irrevoc- irrevocable election by the taxpayer to be subject to a flat income tax, a hybrid subtraction method VAT, which taxes capital value added at the business stage and labor value added by a tax on wages, keeps the current payroll taxes. I can see why it has no (laughs) co-sponsors. Nobody can understand it. I'm not sure what you just said, but I don't think I like it. Well, I read it very carefully because I don't know what it says either, but it's it's a flat tax. So somehow they're getting the VAT tax, the value-added tax in there too, all right? Oh. Uh, yes, I guess this is why there's no co-sponsors. It, it, but the thing is, a flat tax, a VAT tax, whatever, as long as there's a tax on income or an insidious VAT tax, which I call a stealth tax, Congress can still mess around with it like they're doing with the current income tax. They can make these stealth moves that we don't see in the daily headlines, and they can add to the tax code and make it more complicated and, and, and more, uh, more punitive and so forth. Uh, it's a bad idea. Uh, now, go back to 86. Uh, President Reagan had a big move and flattened out the tax code. Their top marginal tax rate went from 70 down to, I believe, 28. He took all those tax brackets and got it down to two or three and so forth. And within a few, uh, you know, by the next Congress, they were already messing around with it. And now we have, uh, it was 26,000 pages then. It's now getting close to 76,000 pages. (laughs) They've added almost 50,000 pages when you consider the legislation and the court decisions and so forth. Flat tax is, is a terrible idea because it won't stay flat. Okay, well, let, let's address, and we have talked about this before on FTPR, but it is so important that people understand it, the progressive nature of the fair tax. Progressive and regressive is uh, applied to taxes. Progressive means that the, the more you can afford, the more you pay. Regressive basically means it hits the poor harder than it hits the rich. And, uh, of course, just by philosophical definition, we don't like regressive taxes. We like to make sure that those who can afford to pay do, and that those who can't afford it don't have to. And what's the most regressive tax we have, Bob? The most regressive tax on the planet is the payroll taxes right now that yeah. fund Social Security and Medicare. Mm-hmm. Again, funding Social Security and Medicare is taken care of in the fair tax. Do not think for a moment that because the fair tax gets rid of those payroll taxes that it uh, starves the program. That doesn't mm-hmm. happen. It just changes the way it's funded. In but fact, the, uh, but it, it doesn't improves. matter. Yeah. It, it improves the way it's funded. Yeah, and it, it say it doesn't matter how much or how little income you earn. You're going to pay those uh, uh, that same percentage in the uh, payroll taxes 
You may have very small or withholding, but your your percentage on your payroll taxes is exactly the same whether you're making ten thousand a year or fifteen million. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's why it is so regressive. Oh, but the, for the people making fifteen million, oh, there's a cutoff for the for the payroll taxes after they make. Uh, I can't remember the exact figure. It's like one hundred seventeen thousand, one hundred eighteen thousand. After they hit that that threshold, there. They don't take a, uh, a Social Security and Medicare. And if you make your tax. fifteen million on investments and stuff like that, and you're not actually working for a paycheck, your yeah, contribution you know, you to Social it. Security yeah. is zero. That's right. So the people that pay for Social Security and Medicare are the folks that are getting paychecks, uh, not the folks that are getting dividends. That's okay. another really bad aspect of this uh, this income tax. Okay, but let, let's address how the fair tax is progressive meaning that it relieves the poor and those on the lower end of the economic ladder, how it relieves them from the uh, obligation to to shell out a lot out of their pocket that they can't afford to give. Yeah. Well, the first thing is that, uh, very simply, the more you spend on new stuff, new goods and services, the more uh, the more you'll pay. I mean, it's very simple. The fair tax is a sales tax. So if you, you have, if you have the means and you buy a lot of new stuff and you pay for a lot of services, you're going to pay more fair tax because you're simply consuming more. It is a consumption tax. Um, used stuff is not subject to the fair tax. So if you're a family that's just getting by, you know, like mom and dad and two kids, and, uh, you know, maybe one or both are, uh, parents are working or whatever, but they're just getting by. Uh, th- they can a- elect to buy used stuff. If they need another car, they don't have to go out and buy a brand new car. They can buy a used one. And when they've saved up enough money and they want to get out of the, uh, that apartment and buy their own house, they can buy a pre-owned house. We, we don't call them used, all right? A pre a, a, a Mildly aged in. house. Oh, they have all kinds of euphemisms for them. Anyways, okay. they buy a used house, and there's no fair tax on it. Okay. So the the fair tax really, really does protect the poor. And then there's the prebate. Yeah, the magic word here is prebate. Yep, yep. The family consumption allowance. Now, the, the one of the first things, if you go on Pop Fox, P-O-P-V-O-X, and you look up the fair tax, either H.R. 25 in the House or S-155 in the Senate, same bill, um, and you look up the pros and the cons, some of the people who say they don't like the fair tax is because the knee-jerk reaction, it's a sales tax, it's regressive, it hurts the poor, which okay. tells you they have not done their homework. Okay, well, the, the beauty of the fair tax, one of the many beauties of the fair tax is its simplicity. Yeah. You pay it anonymously at the cash register when you buy stuff, which means it's going to be inclu- it's being inclusive tax. It will be included in the price of everything, not tacked on after the fact like a lot of your exclusive state sales taxes are now. But the you will be paying the fair tax every time you buy something. Yep. But with this uh, consumption allowance, you do not owe any fair tax until your spending rises above the poverty level for your household size, and that's calculated yearly by the federal government. So what they do, this prebate is simply giving back to you money that was collected from you at the cash register that you don't owe. And we're it's not. Gi- yeah, go ahead. It's given back to you at the beginning of the month. Yeah, we're not going to try to calculate how much everybody spends, and then no. the tax rate kicks in when your spending exceeds. We're going to collect the tax from the first dollar from everybody, but give back to everybody. Incl- doesn't matter how much you spend or how much you make. Nobody will pay taxes on their on their spending up to the poverty level, or they'll pay it at the register, but they'll get it back, so it won't come out of your pocket. Nothing comes out of your pocket to pay the fair tax until your spending. Ex- exceeds the poverty level, translate that until you've at least taken care of the basic necessities of your family. That's right. And the net effect is that you are not taxed on what it costs to keep your family alive. It's, it's that simple. Yeah, but think about this. If you're, if you're on the lower end of the, uh, the economic ladder and we have the fair tax, not only do you now get your full gross amount, no more withholding, plus you get the prebate. Fair tax puts money in those people's pockets you know, twice as good as anything else does. Yep. And plus, if they want to buy something used, especially the big ticket items, they want to buy a used car, uh, a pre-owned house, whatever, they save a lot on that too. So the the fair tax really, really protects the poor like no other tax plan. No other tax 
plan is as good to the working poor as the fair tax. It's just not. The, it, take, for example, I mean, let's go back to the current income tax. The Congress tries to make it progressive by changing the tax rates, you know, 10%, 15%. I, I can't even remember what, the, what the rates are. Yeah. And all the way up to 39.6% and so forth uh, for the higher incomes. But then, but then what do they do? If they left it there, it might be somewhat progressive. But they don't because we have a lot of people of means in Congress. I mean, you have people that go there and become millionaires while they're in Congress. And they figure out... Some of them run for president. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they figure out, oh, I need to change the tax code to protect what I'm earning here and my investments and stuff. And that's what they do. And in fact, I put on my Facebook uh, yesterday that the, the tax code, the current tax code, is designed by millionaires for millionaires. Um, but so they put in all these uh, these caveats, all these exemptions and deductions and exceptions and so forth. So yeah, maybe technically they're they're uh, very wealthy people are taxed at thirty nine point six percent. But then when they take advantage of all these loopholes, it's not it's not anywhere as close to that. So mm-hmm. that that's crazy. The fair tax is very very simple. You cannot get around it. If you're a millionaire and you spend like a millionaire, you're going to pay more than other people who aren't. It's just that simple, and there's no way around it. And again, understand that this prebate is a refund. It is giving you back money that was collected from you that you do not owe. It is not the government. It's not an entitlement. The government giving money out of the public treasury to to people that, uh, that don't deserve it. Yeah. Yep. So... All right, Bob, what are we going to next? How about the effect on the economy? That's, oh. that's going to be a big thing. Yeah, this is a big one. Okay, let's see what it says in the first column. The current income tax taxes savings, labor, investment, and productivity multiple times, creating a disincentive to work, save, or invest, thereby reducing real wages. Yeah. That when, doesn't sound like a very good idea. No, and it's getting worse every day. Uh-uh. <laughs> Okay. The, now let's the, uh, jump over to the flat tax on that as well. The, uh, at least the one as as proposed that they're considering right now. Now that does eliminate the tax bias against saving and investment and uh, lowers interest rates a bit. Does increase productivity, but there's always a but there. It <laughs> continues to tax labor income at a higher rate than capital. So it is still a, it still has some of the bad stuff that the current income tax does. It does not solve the problem completely. Yeah. And as we've been explaining the fair tax, again, um, for its description, it says it untaxes wages, savings, and investment. Because you're not taxing income anymore. Yeah, yeah. So you're not taxing people's hard work and productivity and ingenuity. Um, It lowers interest rates by about 25%. And plus, you don't get taxed on any of your... If you have savings, an investment of some kind, you don't get taxed on the interest or dividends. Um, And it says, increases capital stock, productivity, and real wages. Now, again, this is put together by some of our our very best tax people. And um, we got to work on getting it there in more... uh, uh, simple English. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you what. But speak, <laughs> speaking of simple English, complexity and compliance cost. We have hit on this before. <laughs> oh, the, boy. the income tax, as it has evolved over the decades since 1913, has become so complex that uh, even the tax professionals, Money Magazine found, I mean, they found th- over 30 years ago that the c- tax code then was too complex for tax professionals to keep up with. You made this hypothetical family, asked 50 different preparers, how much income tax does this family owe? They got 50 different answers. The pros cannot figure this out, folks. How can world, yeah. can you and I do that? And of course, that, you know, that's what we do is we buy the, the software and put it on our computer. I mean, we don't. I mean, who sits there and tries to do their income tax by hand? I, I, I knew of one person who stubbornly stuck to that, and I don't think she's doing it anymore. She's a, a brilliant mathematician, but uh, you know, there's stubbornness, and then there's <laughs> let's just get going here. Uh, okay. So the complexity uh, when this uh, chart was put together um, in April of 2015. 
At that time, they, uh, they estimated 73,954 pages of tax code, regulations, and IRS rulings, and court, uh, court, tax court rulings, too. And if you read the instructions, it says the tax code is complex. To, understand, <laughs> to really get the right answer to anything, you have to understand the whole thing. Yeah, so you just have to read the whole 73,954 if you want to understand... Understand any piece of it in the context of the rest of it. (laughs) How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. So more than 6 billion man hours wasted filing an estimated 249 million forms. (laughs) My God, 249 million forms. Hey, aren't we supposed to be protecting the trees? Come on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, but the amount of money that is, uh, that is spent in compliance costs, this is what it just costs you to comply with this complex tax code over and above your actual tax liability itself is staggering. Yeah, $431 billion, That was And, and that's estimate. an older figure. It's, it's yeah, more that, than that now. Yeah, yeah. And there's another thing that's not on this, and that is the tax gap. All right, the tax gap, people that don't pay their fair share because they either underreport or they don't report at all. And that figure is up to uh, close to 600 billion. So when you look at the compliance costs of 4 or 500 billion plus the tax gap, we're talking about a trillion dollars that's being sucked out of the economy. Now, who makes up for that uh, 600 billion dollars that other that unscrupulous people are not paying? Uh huh. You yeah. and I do. Yeah. yeah, we all do, don't we? Okay. Let's yeah. let's move along with this and look at the uh, complexity uh, aspect of the flat tax, uh, the tax withholding, and the payroll tax deductions. They continue from your paycheck. Individuals and businesses under the flat tax still have to file to track income and to file income tax returns, even if it can do it on a postcard. But they estimate that the compliance cost under the flat tax will be cut in about half, 50%, which is nice, but is not enough. Yeah, it, it's nice, but it won't stay that way. We know it won't yeah, it stay goes, that way. It goes back up. Yeah, yeah. Every time a new Congress comes in, they nibble away at it, and add some more pages, and it just, I mean, look look at what's happened in the last 40 years. I uh, love the fair tax. No withholding. You get the prebate. You got more money in your pocket. You don't have to keep records. You don't have to file a tax return. That is gone, over with, done, kaput. And as far as the government keeping track of it, right now uh, there's over 140 million tax filers, and the IRS has this monumental job of trying to keep track of all of them while their uh, computers are being uh, uh, attempted hackings every single day to the tune of like 1 million attempts. But under the fair tax, <laughs> there's only going to be 15 to 20 million tax filers, and they're, that's going to be administered by each state because uh, 45 of the 50 states are already doing a sales tax. Yeah, they those are, 15 to 20 million filers are the retailers that are currently collecting a state sales tax right. in 45 of the 50 states. So the infrastructure to do it's already there. Yep, it's there. And for the five states that don't have a sales tax, well, uh, an adjoining state can help them do it. They can start their own, or they can have the federal government do it, do it for them. But, of course, the commercial vendors that write the software that do all this is going to include it for everybody. Sure. So even if you're in a state that does not have a state sales tax, the, uh, your vendor can provide you with the software to collect the fair tax very easily. No so, problem at all. We're running short on time. Let's hit one more thing. What happens to the IRS versus the income tax versus the flat tax versus the fair tax? Oh, wait a minute. What's the IRS? <laughs> I oh, wish. Oh, I yeah. wish that we could make that a distant memory. <laughs> oh, yeah. The IRS with the fair tax is gone. All right. Because there's no need, uh, like we just said, the tax will be collected by uh, at the cash register by the vendor. There are most of these people are already sent, collecting a sales tax and sending it into the state taxing authority. That will be done under the fair tax. The state taxing authority will take the portion of the fair tax that belongs to the U.S. Treasury and send it to them. No IRS is needed. I mean, the the enforcement is there. Yeah, there may be some vendors that try to get away with it, but they'll be stomped on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but currently, with the income tax, we've got an IRS that costs us twelve billion with a B, twelve billion dollars a year. Oh. 
I'm going to hyperventilate. 100,000 plus government bureaucracy, bureaucrats working. Try, try to say bureaucrat and bureaucracy at the same time. Yeah. But uh, that is bloated. It's our money that they're wasting. We need to get rid of it. Yep, all together. We just won't need. And, you know, some people say, well, you're going to put all those people out of work. Well, you know, it's the government. A lot of them will retire. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them will retire. It's the government. I think there's like 3 million people working for the federal government. Uh, uh, no problem with absorbing, you know, uh, 50,000 people or something like that. Uh, they're, right. we're, they're not going to get fired. They're not going to be sent home without it. You know, it's, the government will take care of them. What happens to the IRS under the flat tax? The not flat much. tax, eh, not that much. They're still going to need an IRS. They may have a little less to do, but that's only for a while until Congress starts uh, adding to the tax code again, as we know they will because we've seen it over and over and over again. Uh, you know, uh, let me remind folks that when when the tax code first came out in 1913, the maximum, the absolute maximum, the wealthiest person in the country was paying seven percent. And then World War I came along, and within four years, the maximum rate went to 70%, seventy percent, seven zero. And it has at times been as high as ninety. Yeah, and we're going to see that again with uh, if they pass a flat tax, it'll be good for a while, but it won't stay that long. It's not a long term solution. It's just as Bob has said before, moving the deck chairs around on the uh, on the deck of the the uh, Titanic, and it's just not going to help you. In the long run. So, so we need to it. do don't, something better. Don't let the politicians fool you. They wrote the current tax code. They can make it say anything they want. And we, the people, are going to have to rise up and insist that they represent us, do the right thing, get rid of that monstrosity that is the current income tax, and replace it with the fair tax. Yep. So... Um, there's a lot more. If you want to find this comparison sheet, uh, you can go to fairtax.org. Up at the top of the page, you click research, and then uh, tax. Uh, well, there's tax and, and compliance. I can't remember the link there, Bob. Uh, Anyways, tax, taxes and tax reform. Yes, taxes and. All right, so you go to fairtax.org. Uh, along the top, there's several uh, links there. Click research. And then uh, the drop-down menu, Taxes and Tax Reform, yeah, there, and it's there, in that There's list. more on that than we've been able to, to address in this one episode of FTPR, but yeah. it's, it makes but, excellent reading. And once you've read it, you will know that the fair tax is indeed the best way to go. Absolutely. Uh, if you, also, if you want to uh, do it a little easier, you can uh, uh, email the fair tax guys, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com, and we'll be, be happy to send you a copy. It's a PDF. Anybody can uh, print it out and so forth. Like I said, it is the most popular handout when we have an event where we meet the public, bar and none. We're running short on time here. Let's again direct people to bigsolution.org and fairtax.org. Yep. Uh, fairtax.org is the, the original site for the national organization. Lots and lots of information, just more information than you can read in a couple of settings. So, uh, but then when you want to get involved, and we hope you do, bigsolution.org. Please go to bigsolution.org and get involved. That's where you can get involved and make a difference. Connect, contribute, and so forth. All right. As we We've say. already mentioned PopVox. Um, uh, let's see. Your uh, oh, and let's not forget the webinar, the fourth Thursday of every month, a free webinar at your computer. Go to fairtax.org/webinar to register. You have to register so they can send you a link so you can get into it. Yes, they have a topic, but you can also ask questions. Yep, they do. Yeah, there's works. a way you can send in questions. It's interactive, so you can ask questions and get answers. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Fair Tax Power Radio. Man, time flies when you're having fun. It's amazing. <laughs> so again, I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. We are the Fair Tax Guys, reminding you that the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you'll demand it. Fair Tax is coming. Don't send in 